Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, October 16th, 2013. We begin with a story from the world of medicine. Scientists from Weill Cornell Medical College have been studying the cells that make up our blood vessels, called endothelial cells, and made some interesting discoveries. For example, it was generally thought that for the most part, blood vessels were blood vessels, no matter the organ. But these scientists actually mapped the gene activity of different endothelial cell populations and found that each organ has a unique signature. The unique mix of growth factors, adhesion proteins, and other genes seem to help the blood vessels meet the metabolic and other requirements of each individual organ. Now, if you've been paying attention to some of our other medical stories, you may have noticed arguably the most important phrase in that sentence, growth factors. While experiments showed that the normal organ tissue signaled the blood vessels as to where they were in the body, the blood vessels in turn produced molecules that encouraged growth and regeneration from that particular organ. Next, the scientists tried some experiments with mouse embryonic stem cells, first converting them into immature endothelial cells and then transplanting them. Depending on which organ they were placed in, they eventually expressed the unique signature and became indistinguishable from the native endothelial cells. This is encouraging for potential therapeutic applications in humans. Some regenerative medicine aficionados in our audience may be wondering what the point of this would be if stem cells could become any tissue type. Why produce blood vessel cells when you could just produce whichever cell is necessary for the organ to be repaired? Well, some advantages are technical, in that scientists are already quite adept at keeping endothelial cells stable and healthy outside the body. And if endothelial cells have a significant impact on regeneration, such cells could be produced in relatively mass quantities and stored before being transplanted to virtually any organ that needed it. Obviously, such therapies are a long ways away, but it's still very encouraging news. Next is a quick update from the world of biology, as it applies to ecology. A group from multiple institutions has developed a new model for nature conservation that is somewhat controversial but may be necessary. Right now, the majority of conservation efforts go toward preserving undisturbed natural land, or restoring such land. And while that is still extremely important, the new model suggests looking at novel ecosystems which are defined as environments that humans have heavily modified. Even though some of these environments cannot be restored to a natural state, they still could be useful in maintaining biodiversity. Some studies in Europe have placed hedges or strips of meadow near active agricultural land, and it has resulted in an increase in biodiversity while still maintaining the functionality of the land to humans. This group's strongest evidence is from such conservation efforts on islands, where protection of untouched ecosystems, maintenance of certain agricultural land, and green urban spaces such as gardens have greatly increased the health of the island ecosystems. While some have worried that such ideas may weaken more traditional conservation efforts, the biologists who proposed it do not think so. Since many environments will always be human-dominated, they might as well be adjusted to encourage certain benefits to the ecosystem. Instead of a third story, this week we are just going to pimp out a new science website called SciCurious.org. It's still under development, but it's mostly short and non-technical articles based on papers in open access journals, so you can continue to investigate further. If you want to keep up with them, be sure to check the website and follow them on whichever social media platform you like. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In reference to our second story, what do you think about the method of conservation we discussed? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.